Greetings to you all, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brenda Candiero, and today I'm just going to talk to you about uh, litter management. Uh, I think from our previous trainings, our live Facebook trainings, we have um, spoken a lot about wet litter management, but again, I thought that today it would be much easier and much better if I try to bring the message across to you as I stand in a chicken house. So with me, I've got about 4,000 birds well, that are almost going out. I think they will be going out just now. Um, and as you can see, uh, the uniformity is good. The weight also is very good. But I just want to talk to you a little bit um, about the litter. So if you remember very well, remember, we say that litter is not just the bedding material, right? So if you take a closer look at on where I'm standing. This is what we are calling litter, right? It's the whole bedding. And what does it comprise of? So our litter will have the bedding, which can either be hay or um, wood shavings, um, and uh, some feed. You know, when birds are eating, sometimes they're also spilling feed, and then there are droppings as well. And all these things mixed with dust and sometimes even some micro, uh, microorganisms, some insects, everything now, we can simply term it manure, right? And this is what you're calling uh, the litter, right? So litter management has always been a very important aspect of broiler, layer, or even pig production. Why? Because this is the environment, this is the housing environment where the birds are, where the birds sleep, where they walk on and they eat. Everything that happens within the 35 days of these broiler lives have, has been happening on this litter. So it is very important that we try to make it comfortable. So number one, what we need to do is to make the litter comfortable. You can either use hay that is finely chopped or you can, we usually recommend that you use wood shavings because with wood shavings, they absorb moisture way better than hay. But if you can't find wood shavings, yes, you can use finely chopped hay, right? And when now all everything is mixed and your birds are in here, you will see that with time, as the birds are growing, the litter will get wet at some point. So if you look a, a, along this uh, drinker, we always recommend that oh, you're always checking to see if there are no um, leaks if all the, the nipples are tight so that water is not seeping out through. Because when that happens, it means that even when birds are not drinking their water, it's going to wet the bedding, right? And sometimes when you are using those bell drinkers uh, or our ordinary drinkers, you need to manage them. And remember, it's always the height that we always want to talk about. If you take a look at uh, this chicken drinking here, we always want to make sure that it's standing on its feet. If you don't set your equipment right, you are bound to have spillages of water and this will contribute to wet litter, right? And then another thing, if you look at the, the length or the both sides of the house, you can see that the curtains are all down. I'm saying that these birds are 34, 35, I think they're 35 days old today and we do not want to see any curtains that are high. This will allow adequate ventilation to come in. So remember these birds, they're also breathing in oxygen and they breathe out um, uh, carbon dioxide. And also because of the droppings, the urea content in the droppings and the moisture, ammonia is going to be produced and we want the ammonia to go out. So ammonia will leave but if you've got your curtains closed up, then the ammonia gas will stay inside the chicken house. So always make sure that there is adequate ventilation, right? And then another thing that we also talk about is talking density. So we are in winter and we usually recommend that you, if you've got an open-sided house like this one, you can go up to 12 birds per square meter, but not more than that. If you go as high as 16, it means your birds are going to be overcrowded, right? And then there's pressure on drinkers. And again, that can cause wet litter. So, so what are the consequences of, of wet litter? If you don't manage your litter, your, your, your litter very well, number one, you are bound to have what we call footpad dermatitis. 
and I'm just gonna try and show you right and these when you look at the feet of your chickens you will see these lesions and I will tell you these are actually um, painful they are wounds and they they're also a doorway of infection so remember the all sorts of microorganisms in your manure or in your litter and if there are any openings any wounds it means they can actually enter into the into the body of the chicken and will cause uh, diseases so when you deliver your chickens like i told you that these birds are going out today and you deliver at slaughter i'm telling you that they will reject these feeds and it's money lost already because they can't take them and they can't sell them so they will simply subtract the total kgs of bed feet or feet that have got uh foot bed uh, lesions so it is very important that you manage your litter well so that you avoid uh these foot beds uh lesions right and so now what happens is because i said these are painful and when the chicken is walking uh it's very painful so sometimes you see the chickens will just lie down they don't want to walk to feed they don't want to walk to drink water so you, they will actually not gain weight in some instances when these are serious or what will happen is that they will then choose not to walk on their feet but they walk on their hawks so again you start to see here uh, the walks will start to burn. Well, this is not so bad, but sometimes you actually start to see they start as red as this, and then it goes on until they are also lesions, they are also wounds. And when you've got those hawk bones, remember this is where probably the 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 the, the the thigh and, and the leg portion is coming from and it's already ruined because of wet litter. And then again, now that the feet are painful, the hawks are painful, the chicken is forced to lie on its breast, right? And probably I will show you one later, but it will actually get wounds and bruises on the breast. And remember, some people, they love their breast and once it's infected like that, then no one is willing to buy and again at slaughter they will reject it and again it's a very big loss so foot pad lesions um uh, hook bands and breast bands are usually a result of wet litter right and then another thing that can also arise from wet litter or poor litter management is uh, ammonia production right so as you can see I always get inside the chicken houses with this thing attached to my shoe, right? So this is an ammonia meter, as you can see. So what it does is, as I'm just walking out here, it's measuring the amount of ammonia gas that is being produced. So the reason why I always have my ammonia meter attached to my shoe is because I want to record the ammonia gas at the bed level or at cheek level. Yes, I can have it here with me like this. But if I'm recording this, this is not what the birds are experiencing. So I always have it on my shoe, just trying to put it at the same level as the birds, right? And then when I go out, I'll be able to read to say, okay, so in this chicken house, there is how many parts per million of ammonia gas? And usually the recommended uh, level is five parts per million so it mustn't go above that once it's above five it means that it's now toxic because ammonia is toxic to your chicken so ammonia will start to cause eye problems ammonia gas will um co cause growth reta uh, growth retardation why because ammonia puts beds off the feed so when there's ammonia gas they don't want to eat i'm sure you all agree that if you get to a place that not smelling and uh, with, without a pleasant smell you also be put off and you wouldn't want to eat so the same with our chickens when there is a lot of ammonia gas they the feed intake will drop and then it means you are getting away and away from your growth curve um, or uh, on weights so ammonia gas is something that we need to avoid as much as we can the accumulation of it so again adequate ventilation 
will help and all the bad gases will go out. Also remember that when ammonia is in the house, it means it will replace oxygen. And when that happens, when oxygen is replaced, you will start to have problems, respiratory problems, even sometimes ascites, especially now that we are in winter. Ascites can actually arise from uh, very high uh, ammonia levels in your chicken house. Okay, and then another thing that we also worry when you've got wet litter is um, diseases, right? And another prominent one in wet litter condition is coccidiosis. I'm sure we have heard about coccidiosis. We call it chitosi in Shona. And this is a disease that is caused by a protozoa. This protozoa will thrive in wet litter or in wet moist uh, conditions. So what it does is that if it's ingested or if it finds its way into the chicken gut, it will cause uh, lesions, it will cause bleeding. And how do you know that your flock now has coccidiosis? When you start to see red uh, bloody uh, droppings, right? I'm so glad that I, we don't have any of that in here. I'm sure they've been trying by all means to maintain their litter very dry. So, but when you start to see those red droppings, then you know that the flock has coccidiosis. And usually, once you notice it, it's not very difficult to treat, but if you let it go, then it can actually start to cause mortalities and it will uh, also cause uh, poor growth. So, coccidiosis can be avoided by just making sure that you've got correct stocking density and also that you've got litter that is dry always. So, I've spoken about the consequences of wet litter, but what is the end result of wet litter? So the end result of wet litter is always a loss because you're going to lose birds, you're not going to get the waste that you wanted, and at the end, you're not going to get the return that you were looking forward uh, to be getting. So it is always very paramount that all the time, please turn your litter and remember even at placement, put uh, a, 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 a thick layer so that it absorbs moisture and that it is always dry. Even when it's raining in summer, when the humidity is high, try by all means to make sure, uh, just to keep the bedding or your litter dry so that you don't get all these problems. Otherwise, I think um, this has gone through and I do hope that even as we are in the winter season, if for next seasons to come, we will be able to manage our litter so that we make sure that our birds, they grow well, they eat well, and also most importantly, we talk about bird welfare. So you wouldn't want your birds to grow up in a muddy and wet and smelling place. So we want them to be in a comfortable place until the day that you take them for slaughter. From me, Brenda Candiero, I do hope that this has helped you and I wish you all the best in your broiler and layer production. Have a good day.